Hi everybody, welcome to this online service where we're teaching devotions out of Psalm 23. I'm Phil Pringle, leader of C3 Church Global, and I'm really excited about sharing on this psalm, which is possibly the most famous of all psalms. Uh, however, we're taking the perspective of leadership out of this. So David understood God to be his shepherd, and God in many places throughout Scripture, Old and New Testament, reveals himself as a shepherd, which is what David was as a young boy. He worked on his father's farm as a shepherd. So he understood the ins and outs of all the, the, the workload and requirements of a shepherd, which put him in good stead for being a king because he saw himself as a shepherd over the people of Israel as a king. So we can receive really clear guidance from Psalm 23 Number one, on how to be shepherded by God himself. And number two, how to shepherd other people. We're not going to get a better example than the God of heaven as to how to be a shepherd. We're up to verse five and, <clears throat> and we had talked about preparing a table for our people when they're facing enemies. But now uh, we started on talking about you anoint my head with oil. And we said that to anoint others, you've got to be anointed. And the only way that you get anointed is to pay the price for that oil, that anointing on your life. It doesn't come cheaply. Through trials, through spending a time with God, through devotion, through consecration, that's when that oil comes upon us. Throughout the Old Testament, once the priests were consecrated, they were anointed. They were, oil would come upon them. When Jesus called his disciples to him, he gave them power. Out of the 500 that were following him, only 12 got called. And they were the inner circle of Jesus' great crowds that were following him. And then within that, even, there was another circle of the three, Peter, James, and John. So being anointed, it's evident by the level that a person's voice rises in the earth. It's evident by the impact and influence they begin to have. And that anointing oil is extremely precious. It needs refreshing on a regular basis. I would say that one of the reasons pastors burn out and leaders burn out is because of a lack of oil in their life. Uh, in the parable of the, of the ten virgins, some were wise, five were foolish, five were wise. The wise ones had prepared. They didn't just have burning lamps. They had spare oil. They'd paid the price to have enough oil to survive the darkest and longest of nights. So in the morning when the bridegroom came, the foolish ones had not, had not paid the price. They just thought they could have this little lamp of oil uh, that would keep burning forever, but it doesn't. It needs refilling. So their lamps burnt out. And that is often, I think, the reason why pastors burn out is that they've run out of oil. They've run out of anointing. They've run out of the oil that uh, causes the gears in the gearbox to not grind. It's, it takes the friction out of meeting elements. Oil take, removes friction, it removes difficulty. It, it creates ease. It lubricates the entire motor and operations of a church. And if we're just relying on the machinery of a church, we're going to find ourselves that without oil, that grinds to a halt. And so oil is essential, the oil of the Holy Spirit. It is essential. It is gained through prayer, worship, and consecration. And as we stay consecrated to God and have that oil flowing on us, we are able to anoint the people of God. And that anointing in their lives will actually teach them. John says, we have an anointing and it teaches us so that we don't need anybody to teach us. Well, that's not an invitation to being a rebel. So nobody teaches me, I got the anointing. That's, it's an invitation into living a life where we don't need to constantly be ringing up the pastor and say, hey, what should I do here? If we can teach our people to walk in the Spirit and every week <clears throat> have them baptized in the anointing oil, in worship, they're going to find themselves going out with a full lamp and that lamp will burn 
The wick will burn and they'll give light wherever they go because they've been filled with the Spirit and they're on fire. But if we don't provide that and we are saying to people, you've got to shine your light, it just becomes an onerous activity. Evangelism, hospitality, all of the, all of the New Testament is enacted and fulfilled in people being filled with the Holy Spirit. You cannot get to the book of Romans unless you go through the book of Acts. You can't get to any of Paul's letters, Ephesians, Philippians, Galatians, unless you've come through the book of Acts. You won't even understand 1 and 2 Corinthians with all the gifts of the Spirit and speaking in tongues and prophesying and healing. You never understand all of that unless you come through the book of Acts. And what some have said, all of that's finished. But then you have to tear pages out of Scripture and just say, well, it's irrelevant to us. That's not true. The Holy Spirit is still here. And we must access the Holy Spirit every day of our lives. He is the God factor on earth today for us. And so we've got to anoint our lives by coming. We, don't, we come into the presence of God and He pours the Spirit on us. John 7, 37 says that if you're hungry and thirsty, you will be filled. So keeping a hunger and a thirst for the Holy Spirit, an appetite for God is very important. If we have too much of the world, too much of the stimulus of entertainment, of worldliness coming into our lives. It's like putting a wet blanket on that fire. It's like killing the appetite, the thirst that you and I must have for God. That's, it's not just a technical relationship we have with God. It is a heart relationship that involves passion for God, that involves enthusiasm for doing the work of God. And that fire comes from the Holy Spirit. So if we're dry... If you're feeling like, wow, I'm, I'm depleted, I'm fatigued, I'm burnt out, I'm, I'm, I'm lost my hunger for God, all of that can be recovered. Easy. Just spend some time with the Lord. And once you get something of God, you want more of God. And that is the, the beauty of God, is that it, He is self-perpetuating, like an eternal, infinite circle that as you move towards God, you only want more to move towards Him. Uh, Conversely, if you move away from God, the more you're going to move away from Him. So change that direction today if, if you're going in the wrong direction and move back to God. Even pastors can find themselves in those situations. And I should say especially pastors because they, they can work hard and find themselves worn out, burnt out. So the job of a pastor is to anoint the sheep with oil. One of the reasons the shepherds did that in the Old Testament is... They would anoint the ears of the sheep and the nose because through those, those openings, flies and other bugs would crawl in, ticks sometimes. But flies especially who would lay their eggs in the brain of the sheep and would send them crazy. And so when they put oil over their ears and over their nose, it prevented these bugs and flies and insects getting up inside their brain. But let me tell you this. Shepherds want to keep their thinking of their people straight. All you got to do each week is to make sure that the power of the Spirit comes into that meeting and anoints their ears, anoints their breathing. And what they breathe in and what they hear in, they're going to find it actually is protected. When the devil tries to overwhelm them with anxious thoughts, with deceiving thoughts, with critical thoughts, with disloyal thoughts, that anointing is going to be part of their defense in keeping their Christian life straight ahead. And then the last part of this verse, in verse 5, is my cup runs over. How good is this? I mean, shepherding provides an abundance for God. I'm going to talk about that more in the next teaching.